hello everybody welcome to my channel welcome back if you're coming back and welcome if you're new it's so fantastic to have so many new people so thanks very much all those people who have recently joined joined in the past joined not that long ago anybody in fact who subscribed thank you this week what we're going to be doing is it's not so much a DIY as a have a look at what I have DIY'd. Now I did one of these um, not this April just gone but the April before April 2020 and I went through all the jewellery that I'd actually made myself to show you basically what I've done, what I've got in my collection um, and to hopefully give you some inspiration to try yourself. Now today I thought I'd catch you up with some of the things that I have subsequently made. There's a couple of things that I have taken from um, the previous collection and sort of rejigged but everything else is new and I really hope that you enjoy watching. So if you'd like to see basically DIY goth jewellery, please keep watching. So the first one I'm going to show you is this lovely thing. And this is a necklace of um, jet beads that my mum gave me. And so I thought I'd better make something pretty special to go on this. So it's one of the basically necklace um, sort of framey things that I get a big bag of from Amazon every now and again. And then inside I've put some, it's washi tape actually, but it's, um, it looks like ancient handwriting that's been discovered somewhere. Um, I don't know what it says, it's too small and old to read, but it's got a lovely crow and a lovely bat, which I used rub-on um, images for. I bought some from Hobbycraft, I think it was, and I've had them for ages, and I just really used them for making jewellery. And you just cut the little shape out, rub it on with a pen, and then peel the paper off. Um, I particularly like this one because it's quite subtle. Um, and if you know me at all, you know that subtle is not always my way. So there's that. I think I'm going to show you all the ones that have these um, sort of generic frame type things in first. And this is a necklace of lovely glittery beads held in place by, I want to say, macrame. And this was a birthday gift from my wonderful best friend Jo, who you may know as Josie Lloyd, the author, the girl who wrote the book The Cancer Ladies Running Club, which I have got a number of videos about on my channel, which I will try and link. Um, and if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend that you either rush out and buy it or get it on Amazon. Or if you're in America, um, they can't call it the Cancer Ladies Running Club because of something that escapes me. Some sort of reason that I don't understand. And so it's called the Bright Side Running Club. So if you see that, then that's our book. Um, this here, I've got a glass cabochon on this. And inside is a little tiny, tiny seagull feather. Um, I pick up seagull feathers all the time to make into various things and this is the smallest one I've ever found and on the bottom I've got some little there's a star and a moon little nail art things that you stick on your nails if you've got the patience the time and the skill to do so so there's that this one I'm not quite sure if I finished it or not um, I think it lacks something, but I'm not quite sure what. I might put some jewels around the edge. I don't know. Um, this is just a big bird skull, which was metal. And then I painted it white with um, liquid ceramic paint, because basically I wanted to see what it looks like. And I actually think it looks pretty neat. 
bit bit of a, like a sort of a ghostly bird type of thing but um yeah i don't know what it's lacking something um but you know i will be retiring soon so i will have lots of time to work on jewelry now this one i am particularly fond of um, again just one of those framey things and a glass cabochon but I found a nice skull and um, cut it out of a magazine and put it underneath the cabochon attached a tiny bit of black chain and a little baby key I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to um, mean but I'm sure it means something very deep and intelligent and I've put it on a black satin ribbon and I particularly like this one actually um, not quite sure why but it speaks to me another skull in fact the very same type of skull but this time in a little picture frame I saw somebody had made some um, I can't remember what they were necklaces or something with little tiny miniature frames and I wanted to get some and make my own and these were the only sort I could actually find on Amazon for a reasonable price so I picked up a bunch of these I've also put one of my little spidery charms on it and to instead of putting glass or anything else um, I've got some glue which it's um, what's it called I'll put it in the um, description or put an insert in here for you but it just sort of fills up spaces and it doesn't go very flat and it doesn't run anywhere it is shiny but it's quite a structured glue as well so this one I just put on a faux leather choker which I think I bought from the works when you could pick up stuff like that in there quite reasonably so that one I like very much as well obviously it's not super silvery so it doesn't go with everything but I really like that one another one with a skull cut out of paper and put inside a little existing jewellery making base with a glass cabochon over the top I've put a little drop this little diamante drop it actually originally came on a bra would you believe but I thought it would be much nicer to be able to see it by wearing it outside of my clothes and this bat comes from a bag of bats that I bought on Amazon all different sorts all different shapes and sizes and you can never have too many bats really can you and I used different beads to make um, I suppose you could say it's sort of almost like rosary chain I didn't get very far um, because it does take a lot of time and effort to make each of these links but I made them they're um, beads of different sizes shapes colors and then it's just a bit of chain at the back but I actually think this is the way to go with necklaces and um, I think I will be doing more of these um, links even though they take time um, I did actually enjoy the end result really so yeah I like that one I like that one quite a lot there we are see the diamante there okay now this one is a bit unusual for me um, again the bats come from the bag of bats as you know you can see they're different um, and this is a tassel on a piece of cord and originally it was just a long piece of cord with the tassel on the end so what I did was attach the end behind here making a loop as you can see sewed it in sewed the bats on so these are actually sewn on and not glued and then cut the string in half 
and joined it together with a clasp. So I haven't actually worn it out yet, I don't think, because this is my most recent creation. Um, I think it's different, it's unusual, it's not what you see a lot of, um, tassels with bats attached, but let me know what you think in the comments. I'd be interested to hear if it's something that you would wear. Um, yeah, tassely bats. Now this one here, I am particularly pleased with. Um, I'd had some perfume samples in these little glass vials and I thought I'm sure I can make something out of those and at the exact same time as I was thinking that Mr Wilkes was asking me if I wanted some red ink to put in my pen and yes it all came together rather serendipitously that I thought yeah I can make one of those things that looks like it's got somebody's blood in it so put the red ink in glued it shut put some wire around the top and put a tiny little cherub on it I had some earrings for many years that had st oh, loads of things on them stars and cherubs and they were clip earrings and they because I don't you know have earrings ears that are free for clip earrings I didn't wear them very often because they did end up hurting me so I took them to pieces and I now have a whole compartment in my bead drawer full of these little stars and cherubs and beautiful things and yeah so I managed to make this I like it very much I put some little seed beads around the top of the wire to make it a bit more interesting but yeah there's the ink going up and down a true romance of a necklace now I said at the beginning in the introduction that I had um, redone a couple of my existing pieces and this piece is one of them it used to have like a um, a circular piece on the front which had a like a painted moonscape in it but I thought I was getting a bit bored of it and it was very blue and I thought well what would I wear more often and yes you've guessed it into the bag of bats I went pulled out this little chap and made a beaded connector and hung a little moon off it and I actually prefer it now very much and I wear it a lot more often than I used to. The other one that I sort of redid is one of the ones that started off life as um, a Claire's piece of jewellery and it originally had um, like a cameo of a skeleton headed woman on it. Um, but the more I looked at it, the more I didn't really like it anymore. So again, out of the bag of bats came this little one. And I had some of these strange sort of hangy, they're like plum hangy things that you use on a building. I don't know that you measure how straight things are. But um, yeah, so that's another lace choker upcycled once upcycled twice who knows might even be three times one day but that's the two that were something else and now they are a new thing okay then so moving on to hair jewelry or hair accessories and these are grips i bought a bag of like a million on amazon and they're all silver metal hair grips. This one was one of the first ones I did, just some nail art things stuck on with a bit of um, black nail varnish. Again, more black nail varnish and a bird skull, metal bird skull. So there's that one. I quite like, I like that one actually. Um, this one here is glitter nail varnish and a little baby spider on the end. 
I think I got like a bag of a lot of these spiders in Tesco's one Halloween. I've still got some left, so there's that one. Then middle sized spiders, they are covered in glitter, different coloured glitters and stuck on. So that's a green one, that's a plain silvery one. So we like those. Big spider, big purple spider. Um, he's got like a chain and a ring and a star. So the thing with these is I used to have like quite bad arachnophobia and I started to make things using plastic spiders which right at the beginning I literally couldn't even take them out of the bag which is pathetic but you know if you've ever suffered from arachnophobia you'll know what I mean but the more I managed to play with these and make things out of them and have jewellery with them the more I managed to get a handle on the fact that it's quite irrational to be frightened of them so there's that then there's this one this was just a plastic black plastic bat again in a bag from a supermarket got half a dozen or so and I use the technique where you glue kitchen towel not two ply kitchen towel you pull it apart so you've only got one ply kitchen towel you press it down over the thing whatever the thing is that you want to cover you get a brush and some glue and you brush it on then when it's dry you obviously cut off all the excess and use a bit here it's um, rub and buff that sort of antique sort of bronzy colour and you just put some on your finger and rub over the veins and bits that will stand out and then I went over with a bit of glitter glue as well and again just a hair grip lovely I really like that one that's one of my favorite hair grips to wear actually and then this one <laughs> this is just a silly one it's a pair of horns and a skull and crossbone piece of um, confetti that I got in a box of something and the little horns I think they came on a set of something one Halloween a thousand years ago and I don't wear it very often but it's just there in case I want it then there's this one which is like a um, milliner's decoration I think um, there's wires that are covered in green paper and two little pretend buds in the shape of these nice iridescent crystals and then on the bendy clear stuff are these faux pearls and then I've just put a purple brad on the end here so it's easy to open and wrapped it round with a little bit of lace um, and as long as you wrap it underneath and don't do what I have done in the past and wrap the whole thing up with something and then wonder why I can't open it um, yeah and I've had these goodness knows how long just hanging around waiting for me to decide what I was going to do with them and yeah turn them into a hair grip not sure if I have shown you this hair chopstick or not I may have done in my video where I show you how to make them but it's just a really a reminder that all you need is a chopstick and something and this is an an earring that I was sent by Enigma Reviews who you may know as a YouTuber friend of mine and I've made the earring into a little hangy thing off the chopstick so there's that then you might have seen me wearing this in a few videos it's one of my Halloween 
bats with a bit of silver rub and buff put on him and lace wrapped around an ordinary hairband that you can buy anywhere more lace coming off at the bottom and then two little bat charms hanging off the lace so when I wear it it's on the left side of my head but obviously you could do it put it at the top or any side and have anything you want it hanging off it so there's that and last but by no means least my beautiful tribal feather headdress this pink here is not part of the feather it's a bit of um, water activated liner it, the feathers don't like sharpie I've discovered but water activated liners they don't mind so here we have four feathers which I have bound up with black cord I bound the smaller ones onto the big one so that there's only one thing to stick onto the hair grip so you start with the big one put the small ones on top and then the only one you have to then glue on here is the big one and as you can see I've got all sorts of lace and ribbon there is a little drop like that there's a little skull there's another one of those little droppy things that I don't really know what they're called there's this which is a tiny sort of um, I think it's supposed to be South American um, vase or something with a little spiral on it there's other feathers there on the end of the lace there's a faux pearl there's a little piece a little chunk of um, what's it called amethyst a little bead and a little tiny skull so this is my tribal headdress I really like it a lot um, I wore it when I was having my photograph taken by Mark Harrison I talked about that in a previous video which I'll try and link somewhere either on the screen or in the description and basically that is the end of what I have been getting up to recently in terms of DIY goth jewellery there you have it then the most recent additions to my ever expanding collection of DIY goth jewellery I really hope that it's given you some ideas about things that you could make or things that you could upcycle or just basically have a bash at and that's what it's all about really having a go so thank you very much for watching I hope you will give this video a thumbs up I hope that if you're not subscribed yet you will subscribe because everybody everybody does basically in the end um, and it just remains for me to say please take care of yourselves remember that the people that love you they need to know that you love them back the part of the world where you live there's always something that you can nurture and take care of insects animals plants there's always something that you can influence positively and of course as we all know the secret of long life and happiness is to stay strange bye for now everybody